Hi, this is Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents, back with another word. Hmm. Philippians chapter 3, verses 10 through 14. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being made conformable unto his death, if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. Not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Pat's two cents. Mm hmm. What a trip. Some of you, all of us have been guilty of it from time to time, and all of us will be guilty of it from time to time. But let's at least be mindful so it'll happen less than more, less often than more. A lot of times, we tend to let the past ride piggyback. And we go through life like we have a monkey on our back. And all the things that God may have for us is more difficult for us to get to and for, the, for, for it to get to us. Because sometimes we're so blinded by what's going on behind us. I'm going to make an example. If you're learning how to drive, driver's ed, and you're being taught how to check your mirrors and do this and do that to make sure everything's a safe maneuver. Sometimes when we first learn how to drive, we get a little magnetized, imagine that you right there, I'm looking at my rear view mirror. I'm so busy looking at the rear view mirror that what's in front of me is getting closer and closer and closer and then the instructor has to say, put on the brakes, hit the brakes. And you're like, why? And you're, ooh, you almost hit something. Why did you almost hit something? Because you were focusing in the rear view mirror. You cannot focus on the rear and move forward with precision and safety. It's just not going to happen. Are those marbles stirring around in your mind? I like to leave little pauses to give you a little second to think about it, as the Bible would call it, Selah. Pause and think about that. Mm -hmm. So, going through life, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pick on both genders now. Okay. Let's start with the women. A lot of us women go through life. We date Tom, Dick, or Harry. Just dating now, just dating. And because uh, <laughs> Peter, Paul, and John hurt us back in the day, Tom has to measure up, Dick has to me measure up, and Harry has to measure up. But since they don't measure up, we're still looking. Now, why did they not measure up? Because they may have had 50 points in their favor. But if they just had two or three that reminded you of the ones back there that hurt you, you scratched them off your list. Moving right along. So you are allowing 
the mistakes of the past, the poor choices of the past, to ruin your chances for the present and possibly your future. Let's go with the men. Men from babies are taught by other men. I'm just saying, it may be the case, you may not be caught up in that. Men don't cry. Whoever told that lie, they forgot about Jesus. He wept, right? And he was all man. But anyway, so they tell the lie to men. Men don't cry. Okay, so what do men do? Men learn to swallow their emotions. They don't know how to maneuver through them. They don't know how to express them because they were not taught. It was not exemplified in front of them by another man, a, a, by a male authority figure, how to become vulnerable and how to recognize your emotions, feel them, and express them in a positive, constructive manner. Whether it's through crying, whether it's through talking, whatever, they don't get taught how to deal with that. So it makes it more difficult for a man to deal with relationships where the woman is a communicator. Because while she's communicating, he is folding it all in. He's packing it away. He's, he's doing pain management, he thinks. So when you're going through life doing pain management, what you're doing, in essence, is dealing with the pain from back there. And you got so much pain back there that you haven't really dealt with that you can't handle the pain right here and now. And that's why some of your marriages fail. You can't handle. You're too busy juggling that. Okay. Let me do it like this. Let me get all my little makeup in my hand. I'm trying to fill my hands up so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, let's just use one hand. My hand is full. Okay. And I keep adding to it. I don't dump any of this I'm adding to it and oh here's my vitamin bottle I'm adding to that now I, I, I'm trying to juggle it now my hands are getting full and somebody wants to give me some more and some more and after a while what happens everything falls to pieces because I haven't been taught how to put that down before I pick this up and that's what you get in your emotions. So you press forward, but you're pressing forward jam-packed and overly encumbered with the weights of the past. You're still carrying all your old garbage. Damage control is not happening. More damage, yes, but not controlling it. So male and female, we both have our ways of letting the past sabotage today and tomorrow. Either in relationships, job positions, business decisions, self-confidence, wherever, even dealing with your children. Relationships get twisted and gnarled up because it, it's almost like taking a soldering iron and you get ready to hook up an electrical component and you've got a wire that's attached. But you have to use the soldering iron to add the heat to detach one connection and take the old wire off and use a new wire and make a stronger connection. You can't keep adding wires on top of that. You're going to short out. We short out in life. 
Okay, I'm going to stop making all my little analogies because I, I drive them into the ground, I know. But I do it to help you understand what I'm talking about. If you're going to press, and I want to read it. If you're going to press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling in Christ Jesus, you can't press toward the mark if you're weighed down. It's just not going to happen. So since it's difficult for you men, like you women, to get rid of that old crap, what you have to do at times, oh, okay, I'm getting all these analogies, so I got to use them. It's like coming in with hazmat suits and all kind of crap and or even surgical, you know, um, uniforms or firemen with all this equipment they have on them. There are times they get so misconglomerated with all this stuff that in order to go back down the ladder safely, somebody has to help them take off some of that crap and help them carry it back down so that they won't fall under the weight or it won't throw them off balance. Mm. You need help getting that crap off of you. There is only one who can? Your Heavenly Father. He is the only one who can. Through His Son, Jesus Christ. So, if you want to press toward that mark, stop first and say, Okay, Lord, help me get all of these hurts out in the name of Jesus. Help me get rid of the anger and enable me to forgive in the name of Jesus. If you've been rejected, Lord, take out the root of rejection. Take out the root of abandonment. Take out the root of abuse, whatever the case is. You have got to go to God to get the stuff taken off of you so that you don't have weights that so easily beset you. Then you can run with patience. The race set before you. Ask God. He is your painkiller. He is your buffer. He is your shield. He is your protection. He's your bodyguard. He's your psychologist. He's your doctor. He's your lawyer. Come on. He's your counselor. Above all, I'm getting emotional because I know what God did in my life. Above all, he is your friend. He loves you with an everlasting love. Go to him as messed up as you are. Admit how messed up you are. I don't care how many degrees you got after your name. Admit it. It's time. You've been constipated long enough. Get that crap out of you. Then see how high God can take you without all those weights hanging on you any longer. It's called deliverance, healing, and freedom. God bless you as you step into yours.